Buongiorno or buonasera, depending on what time it is when you're watching this. Welcome back to Clockwork Kitchen. I'm Nicole, and today we're going to be taking a little virtual trip to Italy to learn about how wine is made at a Tuscan vineyard. Obviously, I'm not currently in Italy. We visited in September of last year, and that was actually before Clockwork Kitchen even existed. But I knew that I wanted to start a YouTube channel, so I figured, why not film? Part of our trip was spent on a road trip through Tuscany, and it was absolutely magical. I have been wanting to visit Tuscany for a while. I love wine, I love vineyards, I love just being around wine. And so it was such an awesome experience. And it was even more amazing that we ended up finding a vineyard that had a guest room where we could stay. And I lost my mind when I found this. Not to mention that they have some of the most drool-worthy views that I have ever seen. I mean, come on. It also worked out, and we did not plan this, but we ended up being there during their harvest season. So the vineyard we stayed at is called Molino di San Antimo, and they're a small family-owned operation, and it was so cool seeing how they made their wine. And so I asked them, can I film? And they said, of course. So they let me walk around with my camera and film all these different parts of their process, ask them a bunch of questions, and really get an inside look at how they make their wine, which I've just never had the chance to do before. So I figured, why not share it with you guys? Before we get started, I just wanna make sure that you're subscribed if you haven't already. It really helps to support my channel, and that way you never miss a video here on Clock we're kitchen. All right, let's get this trip started. Okay, so let's be clear about where we're going. Tuscany is one of the main wine regions in Italy and probably the most well-known wine region. And when you think of Tuscany, you might think of Chianti wine, which is definitely the most widely produced wine in that area. And it's definitely the most common Italian wine that I've seen offered in US restaurants and worldwide. Chianti is produced between Florence and Siena, so in the more northern area of Tuscany. But we actually decided to go a little bit further south into Tuscany to a small town called Montalcino and Montalcino and the hills surrounding it are known for making Brunello. It's not the only region that produces Brunello, but Brunello di Montalcino is world renowned. I saw many blogs claiming that Brunello was easily the best wine in Italy. So of course, that's where we decided to go. Both Chianti and Brunello are made from the Sangiovese grape. The what grape? Say it with me, Sangiovese, Sangiovese. Chianti is generally pretty light, very drinkable, and you can't age it for very long. You really should drink that bottle within about two years of buying it. And Brunello is kind of like Chianti's bolder, more punchy cousin. It tends to be more medium or even full-bodied. You can age it for so much longer than Chianti. And Brunello also has to be made from 100% Sangiovese grape. Now every Brunello differs of course, but in general they tend to have bold, tart, earthy flavors like sour cherry, espresso, and blackberry. Think like a Cabernet Sauvignon, but drier. And because they have such punchy flavors, they pair best with hearty dishes. Things like red meat or or red sauce or sharp cheeses like pecorino. Okay, so now that our mouths are watering, let's get into how Brunello di Montalcino is made. To make a normal standard bottle of Brunello or what's called normale in Italy, it takes four to five years. Yes, years. It is a very long process. To put it in perspective, we went to another vineyard while we were in Tuscany called Santa Giulia. And remember, we were there in September of 2019, and they had told us that they had just bottled their 2015 Brunello for sale. And if you're making a reserve bottle or a riserva in Italy, then that actually takes an additional year on top of the normal time that it would take to make a standard bottle. Now, the process takes this long in part because of DOCG standards. And you might be saying, I've heard of DOCG, but what is that? DOCG stands for Denominazione di Origine Controllata e Garantita. I had to practice that a few times before I got it right. 
In English, it stands for the denomination of controlled and guaranteed origin. And it's essentially a mark that guarantees that Italian wines are being made in a certain way. So it's not that non-DOCG wines are bad, it's just DOCG is certifying that, yeah, these guys are making that particular kind of wine the way that it's been done for centuries and in a standardized way. Fun fact, when DOCG was established, it only picked five different categories of wine and Brunello di Montalcino was one of them. Today, there are 73 different wines. So Brunello has a very long, deep, rich history of how it's been made and Brunello di Montalcino winemakers really stick to this traditional way. Like with any wine, it all starts with the grapes. As I said, Brunello di Montalcino is made with 100% Sangiovese grape. And at the vineyard we stayed at, they grow their grapes organically, which just means that they don't use any kind of harmful pesticides on the actual fruit. Their Sangiovese grapes are picked by hand, although some vineyards can do it by machine. And then they're placed into this very large, basically glorified tractor, which is then brought up to the production room. The grapes are poured into this kind of pressing machine and you can see that someone's always there to check to make sure that none of the grapes look super off. As the grapes go into this machine, the grapes are separated from those stems and those stems are spit out at the end and they use these for other purposes so nothing goes to waste. And then the machine takes the leftover grapes and crushes them and moves that juice with their skin through these long tubes into these huge steel vats. And it's inside these vats that they're going to ferment for at least a few weeks. And those vats have very, very controlled oxygen and heat levels. Fermentation is the key step in making wine because it's when that grape juice turns into alcohol. And every vineyard will watch this step really, really closely. At least for this vineyard, during those few weeks of fermentation, they aerate that wine every single day. So this helps with the fermentation. You can see here that they have wine pouring into this little tub at the bottom, and then there's another tube inside that wine that is funneling the wine back into the vat to create this kind of cycle or loop of wine. And that adds air into the wine to just help that fermentation process along. They also check the wine's temperature and density at least twice a day to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So you can see here, they have this little thermometer measure that they stick into the wine to check the temperature. And then they take some of the wine and pour it into this tall tube thing. It looks like a total science experiment, which to be fair, winemaking is a kind of science, but they put it in this tall tube and then they stick the little measure inside. And you can see from this first batch that it's really light in color and that little measure really floats on top of the liquid. It doesn't sink down at all. So this just means that it's a really, really early batch. They probably only pressed that, you know, maybe up to like a week ago or something. Whereas you can see in this next barrel, the color is a lot richer and the measurer sinks down further into that liquid. And so we were told that when the measurer goes all the way down and you can't see any more of that little white part on it, that the wine is technically done fermenting. At that point, the vineyard can decide if they wanna leave it to ferment for a little bit longer to help develop more tannins and flavor, or if they wanna to move to the next step, aging. So when the wine is ready for aging, they filter out those grape skins and they move that juice into these huge, and I mean huge, oak barrels. This is where most of the magic happens because that Brunello is gonna hang out in that barrel for three to four years of aging, which is a really long time, especially when you consider that the regular red wine that you're buying at your grocery store is aged sometimes for as little as six months. Part of the reason for this long process is again, because of DOCG standards. To make a normale bottle of Brunello, they require that you have to age it for four years in total with at least two years in oak. And if you're ever curious, a lot of winemakers in Montalcino are pretty upfront about their aging process on their website, so you can always check that out. While the wine is sitting in these barrels, this is where most of the flavor is going to develop. But I wanna be really clear here, this is not like whiskey. Whiskey takes a lot of its flavor by pulling that flavor out of the oak, but it's not the case with wine, or at least this particular kind of wine. 
These barrels are huge. They've been used for many, many years. I'm not sure exactly how long they've had these particular barrels, but they're not really using it to impart any kind of flavor on the wine or to, to add any kind of flavor to the wine. They're using oak barrels because oak allows a very, 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 very small amount of oxygen to enter that wine. And that little bit of oxygen is going to help that wine develop and deepen and smooth out flavors that are already inside that wine. So it's not about adding flavor, it's about developing flavor that's already there. Once the wine is done aging, it's ready to be bottled. But we're not done yet. DOCG requires that the wine then hang out in the bottle for at least four months for a normale bottle. And this is because if you were to pull wine straight from the barrel, it would still be really acidic and intense and probably not a glass of wine that you would really enjoy. So instead, it has to hang out in that bottle for just a little bit of time in order to let all of the tannins and all the stuff that's going on in there just settle down a little bit, relax, so that if you were to drink this wine straight from the bottle, which is what you do when you go to a wine tasting, that it's not going to taste terrible and you're gonna think that this is an awful bottle of wine and not buy it. And then the wine is ready for purchase. But the waiting continues. Now you can drink Brunello straight after you buy it, but the Brunello di Montalcino Wine Consortium, Consortium, Consortium? The Brunello di Montalcino Wine Consortium, and yes, that is a thing, recommends that Brunello be aged for 10 to 30 years on average. And that's just an average. It really does depend on the vintage and some Brunellos, if it's done right, can be aged for a hundred years or more. So what I'm saying is that Brunello di Montalcino is a wine that you kind of have to wait for. We bought a, let's see, what year is this? It's already getting a little dusty. This is a 2013 bottle, so that's not too bad. We get to drink this in maybe 2023. Okay, so we only have like three years to wait, you know? Uh, this one, this one's another 2013, so we're excited. 2023 is going to be a great year for drinking wine. The year of the wine definitely matters. 2013 was considered to be a good year. 2015 was considered to be an even better year, which those should be coming out soon, I think, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. And we heard that the 2019 vintage, so the grapes that you literally just saw being harvested, is supposed to be a really, really amazing year. So in like 2023, 2024, keep your eyes out for some 2019 bottles. Well, that's our video for today. I really hope that you enjoyed our little trip to Italy. I absolutely love wine and love talking about wine. So if there's any other questions that you have that are wine related, let me know in the comments down below. And please give this video a thumbs up to help support my channel. It really, really does make a difference. And subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell icon to be notified next time I post. And I'll see you next time on Clockwork Kitchen. Ciao.